Hi, I'm Sam Fesich from the EduMagic Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 189 of the House of EdTech podcast, we are going to talk about having some fun with maps and geography. I've got a House of EdTech VIP, and we're going to focus on three ways to reduce EdTech overload. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of EdTech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech launched in 2014 giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessy.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of EdTech. And we are doing episode 189. Very excited to have you here for some anytime, anywhere professional development. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Welcome, welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. Let's do this. So like I said just a couple of seconds ago, we're going to talk about geography and maps and we're going to talk about a podcast And my big takeaway for this episode is that you feel a little less overwhelmed because let's be honest, things are not easy right now. You know, I've prepared this episode and I'll be honest, I almost didn't want to press record. I am tired. I'm tired, you know, but I have an obligation I feel a sense of responsibility to make sure that I can do this, not only for me, because quite frankly, I find podcasting to be therapeutic, but I know that as much as I need to create this content, you need to hear this content. You need to share this content. You know, you're connected to me. I'm connected to you. And it's important that we have this relationship, you and I, because we need it, you know? So let us not lose sight of that. Again, now that I've hit record, I am talking with my hands. I've got some stuff going on here in the physical house of ed tech, which I'll share towards the end of the episode. I'm making some upgrades. I'm making things happen, which has partly contributed to my depleted energy levels, but Besides what I'm doing here at home, I mean, it is, it is tiring to be in a classroom. And I'll be honest, I don't have to do a lot of heavy lifting because I'm fortunate enough to be working with a student teacher. Now, does that mean I'm sitting in the back of the classroom doing nothing? No, that's not my personality to just be out of sight, out of mind. But I'm giving my student teacher the opportunity to stand on his own two feet and learn this craft and learn the art of teaching and really experience what the books don't tell you. So, but that, that in and of itself is still tiring. You know, I'm not going to turn this whole beginning of the episode into, you know, Oh, whoa, was Chris? And you know, uh, cause you're, you're feeling it just as much as I am. You have your own troubles and your own worries and the things that are stressing you out. But hopefully over the course of this episode, you can take a bit of a break I don't know what you're doing when you listen to this podcast. And you know what? It might be fun if you let me know on Twitter. What do you typically do when you're listening to the House of Ed Tech? Are you in your car? Are you, I would say mowing the lawn, but it's not really grass mowing weather unless this is in the future and you know, you're just catching up. But what are you doing? Where are you when you listen to this podcast? I would love to know. Drop a message to at Mr. Nessie on Twitter. That's all I have really here at the top of the show. So why don't we dive into this episode's EdTech recommendation? For 
for this episode's House of EdTech recommendation, I want to recommend two things to you. First, and, and they both relate to map making and geography skills. And the first one, this is the National Geographic Map Maker, which allows somebody to create, share, and print custom maps, which is super cool. With the Nat Geo Map Maker, you can create uh, custom maps that can display data. You can compare the data. You can use it to um, display multiple data sets on the same map. So you can really integrate and show uh, data that you find on maps with actual maps. So you can kind of blend geography and mathematics. And the nice thing about the Nat Geo Map Maker is you can use it for more than just displaying data sets. You can illustrate ideas for students. You can have your students illustrate ideas by highlighting and annotating and adding information to custom maps. In addition, you could also choose from six base maps and choose the one that best fits the map of, of your choosing, right? So with these maps, you can create them in the map maker and they can be shared online. You could print them as PDFs and you can also distribute them to your students. Um, in terms of additional applications for the classroom, uh, this is a great tool for making maps that you can distribute to your students for all types of geography lessons. All right, you can do a lesson about tectonic plates. You can get information about volcanoes, all of the physical features and characteristics of the land. You can build these custom maps. And I will include a link to a video that comes from Richard Byrne, former guest of the podcast over on free technology for teachers. So I will include a link to a tutorial he recently did on the Nat Geo map maker, and that'll be out in the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 189. Also along the lines of map making, want to recommend an episode of the educational duct tape podcast recent episode hosted by Jake Miller, where he talked to also, again, there's like a whole little education podcast network crossover here. Uh, he had on the guys from the partial credit podcast, which fun fact, I also edit that podcast, the partial credit show with Jesse Lubinsky, Donnie Piercy, and Jeffrey Heil. Jake Miller had those three guys on his podcast titled Google earth and other geo tools. So I will include a link to Jake Miller's podcast, again, that episode where he talks to the guys from Partial Credit, and there's all sorts of resources and links in the show notes over on Jake's Educational Duct Tape Podcast website. So that's the recommendations for this episode, the Nat Geo Map Maker, and you're going to learn a whole lot about what you can do with Google Earth and other geography tools in this recent episode of the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. And that's my EdTech recommendation. Over the last almost two years now, we have, as educators, transitioned to remote learning. We've done online learning. We have done hybrid learning all because of COVID-19 and the pandemic worldwide. And because of this, we have expedited the integration of a lot of technology in education. Technology has always been used to bridge the gap between different constraints that we experience as educators. But over the last two years, it has really infiltrated education like never before. As teachers, we have been using video conferencing to communicate with one another. We've been facilitating virtual classes and hybrid classes with students. In some situations now, as things return to quote-unquote normal, you might still have to facilitate remote learning for students who might be experiencing quarantine. I had to do that earlier this year where I had one student for a number of classes reporting to a Google Meet from home. It was interesting. It was quite engaging. But I'm glad I've only had to do that one time so far. Through many apps and different programs, 
things can be made easier. We know this. But that can snowball and present new issues, like technology burnout. With the goal of keeping education moving forward, schools and teachers are pushing the use of different apps and programs. However, this puts an increased stress on teachers like you and me who need to use these products and pieces of software. Parents who now have to keep track of these programs and students who are trying to stay afloat, even still in this quote-unquote post-pandemic world. Education technology, as we both know, is well-intentioned. It often increases access and it has so many great benefits. I've been talking about the benefits for 188, now 189 episodes of this podcast. However, these can also create technology burnout and technology overload. Of course, we can't stop using technology, and we can't move to paper packets, right? The goal is not to go backwards. We're going to continue to move forward. The goal of what I want to share here is to help you, and it's going to help me, reflect on the technology that we are using and the technology that our students and our students' families are being asked to use. When everybody is experiencing overload and burnout, we need to consider how we're going to balance the many aspects of education technology as we move forward. We have to be strategic and we have to be thoughtful about the technology that we use. This is not a new concept. Even with the best intentions, we have to focus on the impact. So here are three things that we can consider to help reduce our technology load and prevent burnout and overload. Number one, let's check in with our students and our families. Everything is still kind of constantly changing. Again, I got the air quotes up. Things are kind of getting back to normal, but at a moment's notice, things can still change. It seems like Every week, you know, things are different. It's almost not, well, it's kind of like a perpetual groundhog day. We're finding new ways to complete the work with our students. We are finding ways to integrate the technology from the pandemic to still create exciting lessons. Technology can be a helper and a hindrance to this work. Sometimes the most well-intentioned lesson, and I've experienced this, you know, when we're using technology, it can backfire and we don't know why. To avoid this, let's communicate. We have to find ways to effectively check in with our students and their families. I've talked in a previous episode about talking points, and I am very thankful that my district is leveraging talking points for communicating with students' families. I do not know why this technology wasn't available sooner, but certainly it's making it super easy to reach out and connect with the families of my students. We need to continue to use tools like this and we need to see what is working and we need to eliminate what's not working. While this does put more on our shoulders in these uncertain times, there's always going to be a bit of uncertainty, right? Even the smallest changes can have a huge impact on our students and their learning. If they need more technology, we can find new ways to include it in our classes. If people need a break from technology or to streamline what we're doing, we can do that too. As educators, you and I are constantly adapting to the moving and rising and falling tides. Number two, let's take stock of the ed tech that we're using in our classes. There are many ways for technology to come into the classroom. Some classes use some sort of learning management system to keep the course organized online. Other classes use different quizzing and gaming apps to bring learning to life. In staff meetings and at professional development sessions, technology is often presented as an opportunity for teachers to spice up their classes. With every best intention, these programs and apps soon are piloted or become a regular part of the classroom. However, often without thinking about it, we're soon using many different forms of technology at the same time. Now, 
especially with the increase of online and remote classes over the last year, technology is used to communicate with students, teach students, contact families, and everything in between. But do we know just how much technology we are requiring in our classes? We need to ask ourselves some questions. We need to think about what we use when it comes to our LMS or Google or Microsoft. What are the tools that we're using? I would encourage you to make a list of the technology that you use and really reflect on it and ask yourself the following questions. Number one, is it possible for my students to be successful learning all of this technology in addition to the actual course content? Number two, do any of these apps or tools do the same thing as another app or tool? Number three, what is the learning purpose for each tool? Is there overlap? Number four, are my students using any of these tools in other classrooms or with other teachers? And number five, does each tech tool contribute to my course objectives? Now, you might decide to take out a pen and start crossing applications off the list, or you might decide you have room for more. Doesn't matter where you fall. What is important is that we are both cognizant and intentional about each technology decision that we make. And the last thing, number three, as we're talking today about preventing overload and burnout with education technology. Number three, provide a balance for your students. Right now, it just seems like everybody is on overload. We've got students returning to school. Again, I, I've talked about this on Podcast PD. I've talked about it here. My ninth grade students haven't had a normal year of school since they were in the sixth grade. It just, it still blows my mind. Our students and our students' families are overwhelmed. You and I are overwhelmed. That's what I led off this episode with. Our schedules are only returning to normal, but still, most days I still feel like, what am I doing? My head still feels like it's spinning. Our sense of normalcy is still off. Now, technology can be a great resource to keep things moving and keep things organized, but again, we can still feel burned out and overwhelmed. Even people like me who love technology can feel like they just have too much. People want to unplug and disconnect for a little while. I did a great project in the last couple of days to DIY some soundproofing, uh, or not soundproofing, sound absorption panels for the House of Ed Tech here. Looking forward to sharing more pictures on social media. But that was a great two days in the garage of EdTech where I just had to look and refer to YouTube and, you know, design these things and, and get them built. And it was just so relaxing to not have to think about this job and, you know, the classroom and stuff. We should ask ourselves what has to be done with technology and what can be done the quote unquote old fashioned way. Do all the assignments have to be typed? Do we really need students to sit on their computers even though we're back at school? Is there a way for our students to complete assignments on paper? I am finding things for the kids to do that don't involve their Chromebooks. They spent the last year and a half on their Chromebooks. There's a time and a place. I've always said that. Technology is not the be-all and the end-all. So how do we provide this balance for our students? Just how much room can we give students to breathe a little? And ultimately, if we put our students' needs first, as well as our own, that'll reduce the, the overburden, the, the overuse, or the fear of are we using too much technology? Technology is a great asset to this world and to our profession. 
it has opened so many doors, so many new opportunities for teaching and learning. However, as we start to close this out, ed tech is never more important than the education. Teaching and learning have to take the front seat. They got to be shotgun. <laughs> it, the, the learning can't be in the shadow of the technology. During the pandemic, we needed to be and we need to continue to be mindful of the technology that we use or require our students to use. So I think this is an important lesson as we continue to move forward and continue to return to normal. This will help us keep teaching and learning moving forward, even in the most uncertain of times. And now it's time for Just Give It a Try. We have our November question of the munch, munch, the question of the munch. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess we will be munching uh, towards the end of the month as we get closer to Thanksgiving. But let's talk about the question of the month, which was, what are you thankful for? And I've got a couple of audio responses and a couple of tweets to share with you. Let's start with a little voicemail from Chris Stuchko. Hey, Chris, my name is Chris Stuchko. I'm a 16-year learning support teacher here in Pennsylvania and host of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast, and I'm responding to your November question of the month of what I am thankful for. So in my personal life, I'm thankful for my family, for my wife and my three kids, that we're beginning to get back into normalcy with a lot of our winter activities, uh, basketball and dance and other things like that. So we're excited to be back doing those things. I'm thankful for my colleagues that I work with in my department that have taken a lot of situations that have been very difficult and tried to really do the best things for kids, getting them back into the, the mode of school and getting them to be successful in this new school environment that we've kind of created here. And uh, in the ed tech world, I'm thankful for the opportunity to host a podcast and connect with new people from all over the world through social media. Uh, one of my favorite episodes that we've done is, is on our on my own podcast is in the last two Novembers, we've talked to people and asked them what they're thankful for in our school building. And it's been great to hear all the different things that they are thankful for, um, even especially when we're kind of always focusing on the negative. We're, we're, there's always lots of positive things going on inside the school. So I, I would be thankful personally if people listen to the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. And I'm also thankful to you for all the information that you provide on your podcast and help podcasters and teachers uh, all over the world uh, to learn all cool things about ed tech. Thank you very much, Chris. And I appreciate you taking time to send in that little bit of voicemail feedback. And if you're curious, all Chris had to do was go out to chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. And that's how he was able to do that. And I will also include a link to his podcast, the ninth grade experience out in the show notes for this episode at chrisnessy.com slash 189. It's a fantastic little podcast. And I think uh, you would enjoy it. And reach out to Chris because I'm pretty sure we all went through the ninth grade and might be able to tell a story or two to Chris for his podcast. So definitely go and check that out. Next up, uh, I did have a it, it wound up. It's a partial voicemail from Daniela Romero. She is on Instagram at Sala underscore day underscore maestros. And. She, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play it. So Danielle, I apologize that for some reason, the whole voicemail didn't come through, but I will certainly plug your Instagram in a second, but I want people to hear your lovely voice. I'm thankful for weekends, uh, but wish they started on Wednesdays. And just, did you know that some, in some countries, like in Mexico? And then I, I don't know the, the voicemail cut off. I'm so sorry, Daniela. I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, so frustrating. But here's what you're going to do, folks. You are going to go out and you're going to follow Daniela Romero on Instagram. Again, Sala underscore day underscore maestros. I will include a link out in the show notes. And certainly she has a very fun Instagram. She is an awesome professional educator. And I'm pretty sure if I'm looking at this correctly and reading another language, because I can read some Spanish, she teaches fifth grade in Toronto, Canada. I'm guessing, I'm, again, I'm looking at uh, her profile, which is 
in Spanish. So please go follow Danny Romero and uh, hopefully Danny will get the, get your next voicemail in and everything will work out. All right. Got a couple of responses from Twitter. Next one comes to us from Emma Crofts, friend of the podcast. She is at Crofts underscore Emma on Twitter. And she says, what is she thankful for? Quote, that I live in Australia where I am still on paid parental leave after having my daughter in February. I know teachers in the U.S. aren't as lucky. Congratulations, Emma, on the birth of your daughter. And it is awesome that you can still be on parental leave, paid parental leave. So that is awesome for you. And I hope your daughter is happy and healthy, as as I do wish for you as well. And thank you for responding on Twitter. Uh, next up, we have Craig from the Inglaeus podcast. His voice was featured on a previous episode, and he said, and this is funny, and Craig is a funny guy. Uh, he says, quote, the fact that microwaving the lasagna with the plastic film still on it and eating it all without noticing hasn't made me physically sick. Craig, I have no idea how you pulled that one off, but good for you. And uh, make sure you're following Craig on Twitter. He is uh, at Mansion Twit, M-A-N-S-I-O-N-T-W-I-T. And also check out his podcast, The Inglaeus Podcast. And we got one more response on Twitter from Amy Herman. She is at Herman Amy, and she is also a podcaster. She is from the School Librarians United podcast, and she is thankful for having the best listening community ever. Well, I don't know if your listeners are better than my listeners, but we're not here to talk about violence amongst podcast audiences, but definitely check out Amy's podcast, the School Librarians United podcast. I will link to that out in the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 189. And thank you to everybody who participated in the November question of the month. Now, you might be thinking, what's the December question of the month? Well, we're going to do things a little differently. For the December question of the month, I invite you to participate in the House of Ed Tech app Smackdown. The 2021 Smackdown will be the eighth annual Smackdown. This is my last episode of the calendar year, and it's going to come your way at the end of December, and you're going to want to get your responses to me by, as I pull up a calendar that is not going to move quickly, so I'm just going to continue to talk about the calendar, and I'm going to slide over on my iPhone and open up the calendar app, and we're going to change it to the month view. Hope you're enjoying this. This is compelling podcasting. Uh, let's see. This is supposed to come your way on December 19th. So I am going to look to have your responses to me by, let's say, December 4th. That'll give me a couple of weeks. So you're going to want to go out to chrisnessy.com slash feedback or chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. And the whole point of the SmackDown is for you to share your tip, app, what you have loved about education technology here in 2021. And then the calendar changes over and we keep going. Don't worry about repeating stuff. If you're a longtime listener, just send me a voicemail. I mean, you could email me, but as I like to say, you take your chances with the impression I will do of you if you send me an email. So send me a, a voicemail. You can record it. You can attach it to an email. If you're not sure how to send me audio, reach out to me and we will get that recorded. I'll record it with you. We'll have a little conversation. It will be a whole lot of fun. So that's the December activity. So we are prepping for the 2021 House of EdTech app Smackdown, where you share your favorite EdTech tips, tools, and recommendations. And I'm very excited to bring that episode to you at the end of December. Now, let's meet this episode's VIP. This episode's House of EdTech VIP is Mr. J. Billy. He is at J. Billy, the number two on Twitter. J. is a father, 
educator, author, speaker, and he is the proud principal of Ben Franklin Elementary School here in New Jersey. He is also an author. He is the author of Lead with Culture, What Really Matters in Our Schools. It is a lead like a pirate guide. J. Billy is one of the best people I know in education, and the reason I'm making him the VIP is twofold. One, he's not been a VIP before, and he's an awesome person who needs to be shouted out and celebrated, but his Twitter account was recently hacked, and he had to basically start all the way back at the beginning, so all his followers are gone, so he's trying to rebuild his social media presence on Twitter. So if you weren't previously following J. Billy, make sure you go follow at J. Billy, the number two, and if you were following him, make sure you go and re-follow J. Billy. And congratulations to you, Jay. Hope to see you soon because you are a House of Ed Tech VIP. Thank you for listening to this episode of the House of Ed Tech podcast. If you're not subscribed or following, I hope you'll continue to make this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Let's keep the conversation going in terms of burnout and overwhelm. You're not alone. I shared my thoughts. If you have feelings, share them with me. Could be about this topic or any episode you have listened to. All you have to do uh, is send me some feedback. Go to chrisnessy.com slash 189 and you can leave a text comment on that blog post or you could send me an email. Go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback or I love voicemails. This is an audio podcast. Go to chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. And hopefully you don't have the same issues or really that I had with Daniela's voicemail. And I'm really sorry, Daniela. I hope you will try again and submit something in the future. Now, if you enjoy the House of Ed Tech, there's two things that you can do to show your love and support for the show. Number one, and this is most important. That's why I tell you this first. Go tell somebody else about the podcast. Tweet about it. Tell somebody in your faculty room. Word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast you love. And if you haven't told somebody about this one, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Next, you could also become an awesome supporter. I am very thankful for the ongoing financial support of the following people. Thank you to Anthony Arnault, Dan Gallagher, Carlos Garza, Peggy George, Jeff Herb, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, J.P. Presavento, Patty Reefus, Lori Simpson, and Kyle Wilcox. If you're getting value from this podcast, you can become an awesome supporter by visiting chrisnessy.com slash awesome. The awesome supporter program is powered by patreon.com, which allows a consumer of content like you to support a creator of content like me. So it's this whole value for value thing. There's lots of options over there. And if you're looking to support a creator, maybe I'll be the next creator that you choose to support. Thank you so much. The next episode of the podcast is going to be episode 190. And that's going to come your way on November 21st, 2021. Until next time, thank you for learning with me and reflecting with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Thank you.